So before we rush headlong into part four of our base plate build, I just wanted to give you guys a word of encouragement. Well done for everybody who's following these videos and who has taken on this project. It's quite a big project to take on. You can imagine for me when I started, I had to design this platform, I had to build this platform, then I've had to spend quite a bit of time testing the platform, making sure everything was working. Then I've deconstructed the platform and now here we are with me showing you how to build this platform step by step with as much detail as I can provide. Rightio, well let's get into part four of our base plate build. Let's get this thing built. And I'll see you guys in part five. No sparker, no noiser. It's a beautiful. Let's talk about our uh, setup now for connecting our tie rods to our motor and what we're gonna, how we're gonna do that, how I've done that. We are going to use an M12 male tie rod for our push rod connection to our traction loss motor. This is M12 in size in the thread and it's an M12 size ball in the ball. Now what we need to do is we need to weld this ball to the casing so then this is rigid and we don't get any additional slot to our traction loss push rod connector. So what we will need to do here is we'll, you'll need to make sure that ball before you weld is nice and straight. Ultimately, what we're aiming for here when we put our bolt through is we want a nice, rigid 90 degrees connection. So we have to make sure that that ball is level. So you'll have to fiddle with it because it moves. You'll need to get it level before we weld it. That's important, all right? So you'll clean this little bit of casting around here with your angle grinder to get this nice and clean and get some of this zinc off because it's quite volatile when you weld um, dipped zinc or gal. So we'll, we'll grind that off around where our brass is and we're gonna be welding across from our metal casting and housing here across to the ball. Now we don't wanna get stuff inside this ball, otherwise it's gonna inhibit our bolt coming through and we don't wanna get splatter in our thread here. So we'll wind our M9 nut on first to give this some protection and we'll put our bolt through here to give our inside of our bore protection uh, before we start welding across. Now if we weld our bolt, not a big deal because that bolt's going to stay in there all the time, okay? So if the bolt ends up getting welded, doesn't matter because you don't need to take it out. This can just be removed from our bracket if the piece needs to be removed from the sim. Okay, so let's get this cleaned up and let's weld this ball with this ball nice and straight. So I've got this tie rod now in my vise, okay? This is quite very handy having a vise, guys. I've got my workpiece clamped with my welding clamp, very close. It's basically clamped on the thread via the um, nut. Okay, I've cleaned around the housing, right? And I'm gonna run some weld across from the housing onto the ball there where I've cleaned that up. I've magically got my bolt here. <laughs> Uh, in place so it doesn't fall out. And then that's it guys. That ball can no longer move. So you'll have a nice rigid connection for your traction loss motor rod. Once you've cleaned the slag and the flux off, this is basically what you're gonna be left with. So you can see there, we've run that weld across from the housing, across the brass, onto the ball, making sure that our, our bolt was at 90 degrees, okay? To our tie rod thread and now set. Let me show you how this works on the sim frame. So we put it back through our nerve hour bracket with this at 90 and our um, rod connection bolt here is going to be facing upwards. It's now welded in to our tie rod and not going anywhere. Okay we will use a washer like with our M9 bolts there so then we can spread weight across our timber when we do this up 
and we don't split our timber. You'll tighten this nut into the washer. You'll need to hold this piece here while you do this up. I'd apply some medium strength thread locker to this thread before you do this up and then you'll tighten that up firm. Okay, don't keep tightening it as tight as you can because what will happen is you'll pull the tie rod in to your timber here, even though you've got a washer here spreading all over this side, this side will pull the tie rod in and you'll end up splitting your timber. Okay, like we've talked about these guys. So you just do it up firm, but use some thread locker so it doesn't come loose. This is now ready to receive the traction loss uh, push rod bar that goes across to the motor. Okay, that's how we set that guy up. And now people, we come to possibly the most critical part of our three degree of freedom motion platform build. And this is our connection point between our base plate and our mid frame. Keeping in mind that our mid frame then has our top frame, all our peripherals and ourselves sitting on top of this, right? So this needs to be strong. Now in this design, we connect our base plate to our mid frame via a caster frame, okay? The wheel removed. This caster and any caster that you're going to use for this build and in this design must have a minimum thickness material of two and a half millimeters. That is what this particular caster has. Okay, hopefully you can see this and it will actually get thicker as it gets further down. Okay, so at the top where it's gonna be the thinnest, it is around two and a half mil. At a minimum, that is what you need. Nothing smaller than that or it's gonna fail, okay? The top plate on this one is fantastic. It is, it's basically a four millimeter thick top plate. And that's great. That's what's gonna be welded onto our mid frame. The bearings on this have got, uh, are encased really nicely. Okay, they're decent sized bearings as well. It's a good size pin. This has to resist mainly sidewood movement on our sim because our top frame is going to be doing this a fair bit. Okay, when we're going around corners and stuff like that, racing around racetracks or if you're in a flight sim, banking, and that's where the weight is going to be shifting quite a lot in our mid frame. And this has to resist that, all right? So our components for attaching this to our base plate, both on our base plate and in this, they have to be heavy duty. So at a minimum, two and a half millimeter material for the main frame that your, that your wheels would normally attach to. Now, if you're in Australia, you're in luck because this is where I, I bought this and I bought it from Bunnings. The brand's called Move It, okay? It's a 75 millimeter swivel caster, as already mentioned. Yes, it has to be swivel, not rigid. This is rated for 120 kilos. There are 150 kilogram rated same brand, but the problem is it's a 100 millimeter diameter wheel, so the caster frame is too large. You have to get the 75 millimeter um, caster for this design. Rightio, let's talk about how this is attached to our bottom plate and how it connects to our mid frame. Okay, so the first thing we need to do with our caster is to remove the wheel. Now, thankfully this particular brand caster, the axle that held the wheel on was a bolt and a nut. So that is a no brainer. You just undo the nut, pull the bolt out, the wheel comes out. Some casters have a pin that's like a rivet sort of setup, okay, where there's a rivet that will come through the wheel, through the frame and it'll be, it'll be squashed, it'll be pressed, in, okay, if that's the case, you'll have to get your angle grinder and carefully grind the top of the pin off. Don't grind into your material on your caster too much because as I said, this one, you want this to be a minimum of two and a half mil. You wanna take material out of this. So carefully grind the pin off, so then the pin will fall through. Hopefully you'll find a bolt and a nut holding your caster wheel on like I did and um, your life will be a lot simpler. Now, I've gone a bit over the top here because I was uh, originally thinking about running two bolts. So I've drilled two additional holes in my caster and you don't need to do this size because what I've now done anyway is I'm just using a couple of tech screws through those holes in the top that will go, that uh, will self tap 
into the top of our box here, okay? So you don't need to do a hole as large as I've done here. Uh, you, all you need to find is use your seven millimeter drill bit, okay? And, and basically 25 millimeters up from the center of your actual caster hole, where the caster um, wheel axle went through, just measure up 25 millimeters from the center of the caster wheel hole, make a mark at 25 millimeters up, Okay, what I recommend is that you um, try and put something inside this, because this will bend if you put it under pressure, but you need to find something, a block of wood or something like that that fits snugly in here, so then you can safely put your punch where you've made your mark 25 millimetres up from the centre of your caster wheel axle hole, something in between there, so then when you put a punch on and hit your punch, you don't bend this in. You don't crush this, because it, it's strong, but it will bend in, okay? You need to do that for both sides of your caster. And then that's all you need to do with your caster frame. Let's talk about our connection point from our base plate to our mid frame, a very critical component that takes our pivot caster. This is our 65 by 35, with a four millimeter thick wall box. Now you're gonna have one meter of this as recommended in the materials video. What we need to do with this is we need to prep this for drilling and cutting because this becomes our connection point on our base plate frame for our caster frame. So what we're going to do is from the front of our piece of box here at the top side, we're gonna measure in 25 millimeters and make a mark. Then we're going to turn our piece over so that it's flat on our table. Take your ruler or your tape measure, put it on the bottom, on the table, right? And measure up 25 millimeters and make a mark. You'll have two marks. You'll take your square. On the top mark, you're gonna draw a vertical line where that mark is. Down ways, nice and square, vertical mark. The bottom mark, put your square on. I'd recommend squaring it this way. So running your square this side, so it's got more meat on the box to keep it square. Hold it steady. Draw your line in. And where our lines intersect, that is where we're going to punch and drill. Now we need to do this on both sides. We will not attempt to drill through our whole piece of box only from one side because what will happen is if you do that when your drill goes through and contacts the back side of your box because we haven't been able to punch on the inside because we can't get a punch in there your drill bit will walk inside and it'll walk until it bites and it will bite on an angle it won't be straight and what you'll end up with is you'll end up with two holes that are not opposite each other. And then when you put your bolt through, your bolt will be on an angle. And then when we put our caster frame on, our caster frame will be on an angle and that's not good. So we have to do this both sides. You have to make these marks 25 millimeters in from the front, 25 millimeters up from the bottom. You have to do it on both sides and you have to drill both sides. Then you'll have holes that are opposite one another and you'll have a nice straight bolt and you'll have a nice straight caster frame. Now the beauty of this is because you've got one meter, we can do this before we actually cut our small piece um, to put on our base plate frame. So that means you've got plenty of material here to put your foot on and to follow the same method as we did for our traction loss plate as far as your drilling goes. So I recommend, again, using some type of lubricant, WD-40 or the like, a pilot hole. I recommend a five millimeter drill bit first after you've punched this. Remember, you must punch these where the lines intersect. Then drill with a five millimeter drill bit and your finishing hole diameter is 10 millimeters. That will take an M11 bolt. A pretty chunky bolt, but this part requires strength. Your hole's drilled, ready to receive your bolt. We then need to get our length that we're cutting this at and that is 75 millimeters in length. Again, take your tape measure or your ruler, put it on the front of the box, measure back 75 millimeters, make a mark. Take your square, let's do it this way, so there's plenty of meat here on our square, 
on your mark, draw a nice straight line. Measure in again on every face, 75 millimeters. Make a mark and draw your line across that mark. So then your line follows all the way around. Again, measuring 75. Make a mark. Sorry, that was 65, 75. Make a mark. Get your square. Draw around. Okay, see what's happening here? Our line is following all the way around. Rinse and repeat. This one I can see my marks from my previous lines, so I'll just join them. Okay, it's gonna be very hard for you to get that square if you try and cut right through it with your angle grinder. Now, it wouldn't be a big deal because it doesn't need to be square on the end, but it's just gonna look dicky. So this is a much better way to do it, and then you'll just cut each side with your angle grinder, and you'll get a nice square cut. So you'll cut this off at 75 millimeters in length, and this is now ready to weld onto our base plate. The big leftover chunk of this is used on our mid-frame as well. This becomes our bracket for holding our motors onto our mid-frame. Okay, guys, get into that, and then let's have a look at how we attach this onto our base plate. Okay, I'm gonna assume that you've got all of your flat steel here where this piece is about to live all clean and grinded all the mill scale off. This is a critical weld here. We want a very strong weld. So we, mean, we definitely wanna make sure that our parts are clean. Now, the advantage of using uh, this type of box, you can see the, the edges of the box are actually rounded. So we don't have to really do much grinding. All we gotta do is just take the paint off these edges that are gonna sit on our base plate. Because they're round, they naturally provide some nice gap, right? For us to get some weld in. This weld is a two-stage weld, okay? Because it needs to be strong. So, once this is all cleaned up and your paint's off your box, your base plate's clean, again, you are gonna measure 35.7 millimeters, or was it 37.5? I can't remember, half of 75 millimeters, okay? Remember, the spine of your base plate is 75 millimeters. Get a calculator, work out what half of 75 is, make a mark, then the middle of your 35 millimeter box. Again, get a calculator, find what the halfway point is of 35 millimeters, put a mark on the front of the box, line those marks up, do the same at the back. Okay, you'll have measured across this point here. Remember this is 75 millimeters long, so get a tape measure, measure along 75 millimeters, draw a line, half of 75, make a mark, and again, half of 35, make a mark, and then sit this right in the center of those marks so this is exactly centered on your base plate. Talking about vice clamps, here's a little mini vice clamp, okay? This is perfect for clamping something like this to our workpiece. You can use your F clamps if you don't wanna buy something like this, you just set your F clamps up so then they can um, you know, clamp this, or get, a, get yourself a little set of vice grips that can go inside, and, and clamp that into position as well. If you don't want to spend the money on a little set of vice clamps, you can use your big F clamps. They're just going to be a little bit more, um, they're going to be a little bit more cumbersome because they're so large, okay? Rightio, once that's clamped in position, right, you are going to tack all four corners with really good solid tacks. Keeping in mind, you've already got this all drilled and everything and it's set up. So then this piece of box is right at the front of your base plate spine, right? So it's, it's basically sitting right along the front. So that's how it's located. Okay, because that's all gonna be critical for the length of our mid frame, et cetera. So that's where you need to set it up with those dimensions, right? You've got it clamped. You're doing a nice heavy tack in every corner. Rightio, we're gonna do a two-stage weld now because we've got quite a large gap because of these rounded edges. It's awesome, but it just means we do need to do two welds. You're gonna do a nice slow, because you've got thick steels here. Okay, so it's gonna be hard to get this wrong. You're gonna do a nice slow bead. You can't even see the first one because it's inside. That will run inside and it's gonna fill that gap. Okay, and you're gonna do both sides. So you're doing a gap filling weave first, 
then you're going to do a second weld over the top of that weld where you're going to concentrate on your welding wire weave to be a little bit wider. So you're pushing the pool left and right a little bit more. So it's pushing into the box and onto your box and melting into the weld that you've already filled the gap with. Job's done. You could go on and you could do an, you could do another weld this side, another weld that side. You could do multiple layers of welds. Two welds will be enough to hold this on. Two hot welds will be enough to hold that on. It's not going anywhere. And besides, we are also going to add some bracing from the front of this down to our stabilizer for here, which is going to give us a little bit of extra insurance. We'll use some of our 10 millimeter solid um, mild steel bar, and we're going to cut that and weld that on here as well. And then this thing is never going anywhere. It's gonna have all the strength we need for this to uh, do exactly what it is designed to do. Let's talk about how we get our caster frame attached and level onto our now attached 65 by 35 millimeter box. Okay, you're gonna put your bolt through. Ignore my bolt here. This was the only bolt I had available that was 10 millimeters in diameter. Um, it's a longer bolt. I was just lucky that the caster wheels that came, this caster frame had little inserts in them. I was able to use them as spacers because my bolt was so long that the thread sort of ended here before it actually got this tight. So they, they allow me to be able to tighten this up. So what's going to happen is as you tighten your 45 millimeter bolt that you purchased, your caster frame that is sitting over this, it will crush, which is good because it will clamp your caster frame on to your box, right? You'll get it to a point where you can still move it because you need to get this uh, caster. The top of your caster here needs to be level before we tech screw this into position so then it won't move anymore. To get that level, you need to make sure your base plate is level, okay? So I'm assuming you're doing this on the floor. Um, make sure your base plate is level because otherwise this is not going to be level, okay? So you will get a little torpedo um, spirit level or the like. So just on that, guys, uh, these uh, little small, what we call torpedo levels, spirit levels can be bought really cheap. That's like a $5 job. There's all sorts of little mini ones. This is a magnet one, it'll stick on metal. So it's pretty handy when you're working with metal. You can buy little ones like this that could just be sat on top to get a level. You know, here's one that you can run on a string line, right? But it can be used just as a normal level. So, you know, these things can be uh, obtained very cheaply if you don't have them. Or an alternative is, of course, and I should have pointed this out, uh, because of the way we're setting um, our caster frame up, on our 65 by 35 box and we've got a there is a straight edge of the caster frame you could indeed use one of your squares uh, from your square set the smaller square in your square set that you purchased in our tools list in video uh, number two okay you could use that square to run along the bottom of your flat frame and get a nice straight um, get your caster frame straight on the straight side of the caster frame and you could square that onto your box now we've designed this caster frame to be forward on our box because as mentioned earlier, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna brace this. And you will fiddle around with your caster plate until you get it level, okay? When it's level, you're going to use one of your tech screws. You're going to use your impact drive. You are going to come to where you've drilled your holes, 25 millimeters above your main caster frame bolt hole. And you are going to drill, you are going to put your tech screw in here. Now, now mine just went in because I've already drilled this, okay? Now these act a little bit like a drill, okay? They have a drill head type arrangement on the top, which is self-drilling, okay? You need to put a fair bit of pressure pushing against your box here with this running at a reasonable high speed so like a drill not too fast pressure and medium speed okay this thing will be rattling its ring out suddenly you'll break through because you drill a bit part here it will drill through and then it'll want to rip in you need to stop at that point because if you keep full speed after it breaks through you'll go all the way into your box and you'll strip your thread on your tech screw and you'll strip the thread you've just made in your box and then these will be no good. 
So as soon as this breaks through, okay, stop immediately, right? Then very slowly screw the tech screw the rest of the way in until it starts to rattle again and then stop screwing, okay? You must do that if you over screw this because you're pushing so hard to get the actual tech screw through and then you keep it on high revs after it's broken through, this will screw itself in and then it'll strip and then it's cooked. It's no good. So this locates this and then you'll, obviously then you'll do this bolt up very tight. You'll have those in place and this is going nowhere, okay? That's how we need to locate our caster frame on our 65 by 35 millimeter box. I really wanna try and keep these videos to that 25 to 30 minute mark. Videos longer than 30 minutes, they're just too long for people to sit and watch. Just wanna say a big thank you to everybody who subscribed. Really, really appreciate you guys. Next week will be part five and the final part of our base plate build. I promise you it will be the final part of our base plate. In this video, we'll finish bracing our caster frame stabilizer and then I'm gonna take you through how to prep all of your base plate for painting. Everything you need to prep it, the primers you need to spray on it, colors are gonna be down to you. Obviously, that's gonna be your choice, how you wanna paint your rig, but I'm going to provide you with the information and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to paint your base plate. I will see you guys in part five of the base plate build. Stay safe, take care, and we'll see you then.